Jump into the show, guys. We'll see you in just a moment. You're watching PTZ Optics Live, a high-definition broadcast available on YouTube and Facebook Live every Friday, streaming at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Broadcast quality made affordable. Thank you for tuning in. Hello, everybody. Welcome to PTZ Optics Live. I'm Tess Protesto. And I'm Paul Richards. And today we're talking all about how to host live meetings and what that means, the hows, the twos, the where's, the do's, and the don'ts. Yeah, stay tuned for some tips and tricks regarding that. We also have our very first in-studio guest in our new space, and that is going to revolve around nonprofits. Yes, so today we're start restarting back our charitable donations. This is for the first show of, of the year. And so if you hit that like button, you're actually helping to donate a, a dollar for every like, up to $250 to the, Chester, to the Crime Victim Center of Chester County. And here to tell us a little bit about that before we dig into hosting live meetings is Kathleen Gast. So let's go ahead and, and introduce Kathleen to the yeah. audience. Do you want to just hop over there? Let's or? hop over right. to our broadcast area. We're going to migrate. So we're going to move over to our studio area over here. Now we've done something different for today's show. We brought in our conference room table because we are having a live meeting with Kathleen. Hi. Hi. Thank you for having me. Of course. Thank you for joining us today, being the brave soul Yeah. to come in here for our first studio guest. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. So Kathleen, why don't we do a little lightning round just to okay. get to know who you are. We know you're from the Crime Victim Center of Chester County. Mm -hmm. We want to learn a little bit about that in this live meeting where we're going to kind of go over the do's and don'ts of how to do live meetings um, and maybe use your organization as a case study. But first, let's just get to know you for a little bit and do a lightning round. Love it. Let's do it. Awesome. So the first uh, question in our lightning round, just to get to know you, mm -hmm. is what is your favorite candy? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I like Kit Kats. Same. Yeah, they're yeah. nice and simple, and I like a little crunch in my candy, so <laughs> I like that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, one of the other questions we usually ask is, what is your fa what's your favorite book? Oh, that's a loaded question for me, too, because I am a pretty big reader. But I just finished a book called The Wind-Up Bird Chronicle by this Japanese author called, um, his last name is Murakami. And it's like all these fantasy sci-fi levels to it. So I think that might be up there for me right now. It Are changes you a, lot. a coffee drinker or a tea drinker? Coffee, all coffee the way. Coffee, all the way. I have coffee coursing through my veins right now. I know, <laughs> same. <laughs> How about, are you a Mac or a PC girl? Ooh, I have a Mac. I think I am a Mac person. Um, the draw to PC for me for a while was Microsoft Paint and now they don't have Microsoft Paint, Paint anymore. Paint. I mean, oh. you guys are tech people, so you're That's probably funny. way past Paint. But Paint helped <laughs> me out for a lot of years, but now they don't have Paint. So full-on Mac person. There we got a feature request. There we go. Stop coming in. <laughs> Microsoft executives that are watching this. <laughs> So I guess, does that mean that you're also an Apple cell phone user? Yes. And I like the fact that my phone can easily connect with my Mac and everything's kind of all in sync and in the same realms of it. Yeah. Nice. What Great. else are we missing? So last question, uh, what is your favorite movie? No, this isn't the last question, but this is the second last. Oh, that's also a little question for me. Um, Arrival. Oh. What is and like if you we have another it. hour of live stream, I can talk to you about <laughs> why. But Wait, that's, which one is that? Is that a new movie? It's a newer movie. movie. It's with Amy Adams, and it's a story about aliens and communication and politics, which are like three of my pretty big interests. Really? <laughs> yeah. So it was a, wow. it's a great movie. That's interesting. Okay, so the one that always stumps people. So this might be the hardest one. If you could go back in time to any place in history, time and place, where would you go? Yeah. So where and when? So it has to be... In the, in the past. past. Even if it's yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Definitely yesterday. Um, I had a snow day yesterday. It was all about self-care. And self-care is very important <laughs> yeah. in the realm of work that I do. Yes. And I thought yesterday was a really great day. So I would totally go back there. All right. Especially very because nice. if I had to think about way in the past, I don't really want to wear a corset. And I yeah. like plumbing and electricity. 
<laughs> so I would Having choose yesterday. <laughs> interesting points there. All right, <laughs> And All like right, women's so, rights. So let's, yes. <laughs> so ev- everyone, if you're just tuning in, we're talking to Kathleen Gast, and she is, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are for the organization? It's the Crime Victim Center of Chester County. If you hit the like button, you're helping donate $1, um, so please do so. Tell us about like what you do for the organization and what the organization is. Yeah, so the Crime Victim Center is a victim advocacy agency. So that means we help victims of any type of crime. There are a lot of centers like ours that only focus on domestic violence victims or sexual assault victims, but we help victims of any type of crime. We don't say no to anyone. Uh, That's something that I am proud of and my fellow staff members are proud of as well. Um, We offer advocacy services, which means we provide accompaniment at hospitals, police station, courthouse, if anyone has to go there. And we help out whatever sort of processes happen after crime occurs. Um, We also have a 24-7 crisis hotline, which is super important. We have free and confidential counseling resources. So all of those elements we help out after a crime has happened. But we also have a prevention education program where we go to different schools, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, really any sort of group. And we speak with people about how to stay safe. We speak with people about how to prevent violence. So our agency is really cool because on one end of the spectrum, We're helping out people after a crime has occurred. But on the other end, we're trying to create a cultural shift so that it doesn't happen at all. And one of my big roles at CVC is working with our volunteers. And our volunteers are super important in both realms of the agency. They help with our hotline. They help extend our reach in different community spaces. And it really does give me hope that there are people out there that are willing to donate their time and their energy. So every like that we get here is super important and it really is super helpful. So thank you. You make me like wanna cry. Wow, that's such a great, so I'm so glad to have you here because I think an organization like yours can definitely benefit from live streaming maybe live streaming the meetings. I know a lot of um, nonprofits sometimes have uh, trouble getting the message out. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it, knowing from a marketing standpoint how hard it is to craft marketing plans and messages and PDFs, and knowing, on the other hand, from the live streaming world, how easy it is to take your cell phone out and go live. So talking about live meetings, we're going to talk about how to do it casually in a social setting where maybe you're at Starbucks and maybe you're just jumping on a live stream and letting people know about what you're excited about from for your job. And then we're going to talk about more professionally how to crowdsource ideas and create something. So, Tess, I, I, you know, how many likes do we have so far? I'm we have to get these guys right some now. money here. <laughs> we have 13 likes on YouTube and 75 likes on Facebook. 75 likes on wow, Facebook. Love we it. have to give her more. Yeah, we do. <laughs> That's not enough. Come on, what are you going to give her? Oh, my gosh. All right. Let's, let's Cough say. Cough it up. Let's say, let's at least give an extra thousand plus of all the likes. I think we can need to do even better. Can you do any better than that? Really? Come on. All right, fine. All right, how about, how about we do $1,500 plus all the likes? All right, as long as that'll keep my job, I would push you more, but uh, I'm a little afraid now. <laughs> that is let's incredible. That is incredible. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Thank we you. We want to make sure, so, you know, and Pat is noting in the chat here, It's important to note that uh, many communities and municipalities have services like this. So make sure that you know what is available Mm -hmm. to you in your area. And we're so thrilled and thankful that we, especially being in a university area as well, Mm -hmm. have this available. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So let's start there with a great start, helping out a great uh, community. And let's kind of think about how we can do this. So first of all, we have a little presentation. And the very first thing I wanted to make a little joke is that live that meetings- That could always be dangerous. Is not to be, this is a tech joke, so you know, don't worry. <laughs> not to be uh, confused with Microsoft Live Meeting, which is discontinued and was like the very first video conferencing live streaming mm. software from Microsoft. So not to be confused uh, with Microsoft Live Meeting. That's my, uh, the first slide on our presentation we're going to pull up here. But um, the, the thing we're going to talk about here is the difference between a live broadcast, which is really kind of 
what the start of this show was. Right now it's kind of like a hybrid meeting, but we're gonna jump into more of a meeting to give you guys a, a kind of a view of, of what this looks like. But I have a presentation that we'll share here. Um, but the live broadcast versus the live meeting. That's where I kind of wanted to start this because I think a lot of people think about live streaming as um, something that you know just is directly to the camera. Yeah, and whether it's entertainment purposes or educational purposes, we want to open this up and show businesses that they can benefit beyond a presentation and uh, explanation of services. Yeah, so we've got a presentation, but we're hopefully going to jump into more of a creative, collaborative, live meeting. So let's get through this presentation as fast as we can just to get it out of here. So, not to be confused with Microsoft Live Meeting. It's slide two. Ha ha. That's me and Tess <laughs> there at a, um, you, can, you can check this out on our Facebook page in the groups, but that's just us doing a live meeting at Starbucks. Yeah, this is sort of where this whole idea transpired from. We really ended up just having a live meeting. We were going to hop on and say Happy New Year and that we're back in the office after vacation, and it just turned into bouncing some ideas uh, off the audience, and the audience actually said that they would be interested in the idea of live meeting. So we decided, why don't we make it a topic Why don't of we go ahead and play a clip from this, Michael, from this actual live meeting that required no expensive technology, just a single iPhone? Scheduling, the importance of scheduling, having a schedule and agenda. So that was one. And then the last one Tess came up with, which is the live meetings and is the this? creative. This is a live meeting. This is a live meeting. We definitely need to do more of this. And I honestly think the live meetings could be done in a public space. We can, I mean, if people show up, thankfully there's a few people here. Thank you. Uh, we can get some feedback live and check something off the list and look further into it, or the majority of the people say no, so get rid of it. Because that's the people that matter. Yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm so, and I like how the live meetings really pulls. So there was an example of a live meeting where we just did it right at Starbucks. Low tech, selfie stream, no big deal. Uh, this is about getting the message and the conversation started. So there's always, you always have to rem remember that people want to see kind of more of like your raw, authentic side. And it doesn't have to be in the studio. It doesn't have to be in the boardroom or the conference room. But as we talk about some, of, we'll go through some of the benefits and some of the types of, of things that are go, go on, like a press conference or a larger boardroom or meeting room. There's definitely a need for thinking about having a producer and having a team help you. But it's definitely fun to do those little selfie streams. Yeah. So the next one is, so not to be confused with Microsoft Live Meeting. And the next slide is the live broadcast. So the live broadcast is a traditional one-to-many scenario where the focus is really on the content and the delivery. Yeah, there might be a question section of the conversation, but this is meant to be a way more interpersonal communication, two-way communication. Yeah, and this live meeting, it's a new concept where viewers really get a seat at the table. Like, there's no reason why you shouldn't be giving your audience and your community a, a seat at the table and really be listening to their comments and questions because these could be, for someone like you, Kathleen, a new volunteer, mm -hmm. right? Or you never know who your next customer is going to be, and you, you really should be inclusive, I think, to the uh, engagement and community that you bring in. Yeah, to add to the nonprofit idea with that, when you have you know, volunteers we were discussing before the show all over the county, it's a big county, it's hard to get um, you know, people in the door at times for meetings. So if you have volunteers or um, off-location workers, it's a great way to be able to include everyone in the discussion and uh, in the leadership of your organization. Yeah, and I'm even thinking with the way that our office functions, so many people are doing so many different things all the time and we're in the courthouse and we're, like I said, all over um, the county and sometimes making staff meetings can be um, tough for people. Mm -hmm. And if they had the ability to kind of like log in or if we can record them and post them later and stuff like that, that would help out a lot of people just staff wise. Yeah, yeah. Having, having the recordings available, which is all done completely free by YouTube and Facebook. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great technology to be, to be looking at. Our next slide um, takes us into the benefits. So some of the benefits that we've seen, and we, we actually, you know, you can look on our, some of our live meeting shows, is crowdsourcing ideas mm -hmm. is one of my favorite. Um, you, you have to have, be able to have a marketing team and a meeting that is okay to be public. You know, you're not 
discussing some secret new project live. Right. You know, it, it would have to be something that's okay to kind of be publicly talked about. Mm -hmm. But we have a very technical customer base. Some of them have much more experience and time in the industry than Tess and I. So us listening to the chat and the comments, we learn more from that than we do. And sometimes we don't even have access to our engineers as much as we'd like. Yeah. And literally, our, our audience is like teaching us things that we'd never know. Absolutely. So just crowdsourcing these ideas is one of the, my favorite benefits. Yeah, the ability to bounce ideas off the people who matter most, your customers, potential clients or partners, is extremely important, but you know we have highlighted here authentic communication. You are showing how you're different from other companies just based on the fact that you are willing to open the doors to inside of your office, you're live streaming meetings, but you're showing that you're honest and you, like Pat said in the chat, you are accountable for the words you say in the meeting and you are able to respond to issues in yeah. a you know, you know, transparent manner. Um, with the era of Web 2.0, Web 3.0, and social media, people want a company to almost be a person. They want to feel like they can communicate with the company and that it's not just a big corporate, you know, behind a curtain person. They want to be able to interact directly with executives and whatnot. Totally. And this uh, one I have here is promoting the process. And for those of you who have ever been in, in, uh, in a company where you're releasing a new product, or even for you, Kathleen, when you've maybe got a new program, mm -hmm. um, sometimes these things can take months, if not years, to roll out fully. So throughout the process, why not include the community that you eventually want to be a part of the new program, mm -hmm. right? So with, for us, when we're releasing a new product, we might have product updates. Or if you're a software company, you might have new software release logs that you can say, hey, we came out with this, this, and this, and then that one customer chimes in and says, well, you did all that, but you forgot about this and this, and then you realize, wow, most of the customers actually want this. Why are all the engineers working on these three things right. when everyone's asking for this? So it's a chance to really reassess and reevaluate what your customers really want. And one of the things I've learned with live viewers is the people who are willing to get there live and watch live, those are your, your basically evangelists. Those are your the people who are audience. the most willing to give you good advice mm -hmm. and your biggest supporters. So they can potentially give you some of the best advice. Yep. So we're trying to get through this presentation as quickly as possible because we want to jump into a live meeting with you guys where we can really all be collaborating and talking. Um, five reasons to do a live meeting. Um, just really quickly, grow your reach, obviously, with live video. Show you're transparent and honest. Show that you value your customers' opinions, thoughts, and concerns. And when we get into this meeting, I'm hoping we're going to get a lot of thoughts from the, um, from the audience. You can see here, just this is a picture from our live meeting at Starbucks. Look how many comments there were. Yeah, we got a lot of engagement on that one, which was really exciting. You can get feedback on ideas, products that you've recently distributed or services that you offer. And you can also learn from your customers or prospective clients. We were talking about how we have a tech, tech, technology, technical, technical audience, audience um, who often gives us great ideas and enlightens us on things that we weren't even uh, sure about previously. And it also shows some character Sorry. personality behind your company and who's running it. Were you going to chime in there? Yeah, I have a question. So you guys had your meeting at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that a Wawa coffee sleeve that I saw on your coffee? Should it be? Should it oh, be? Interesting. No. I just thought I'd uh, point that out. It's very <laughs> interesting, pretty taboo. I don't know if that's Go what back. I'm seeing Let's or not. Check it out. Go back. We need to figure this one out. No, no we're okay. it does look we're like okay. it says it Wawa, like... but I think it's okay. like Java. Yeah, uh, so okay. I, I would I would have to point that out if that was the case, but all right, you guys are safe. That would be hilarious. <laughs> and start with the <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so the next slide, we're just trying to get through this as quickly as possible, is meetings that, all right, so here's five types of meetings that off the bat are going to be perfect for live meetings. One is meetings that are already meant to be available publicly. So public uh, press conferences, government um, officials, all that kind of stuff. Uh, brainstorming meetings where community feedback is critical anyway, right? So if you're, if you're brainstorming about how to improve your product and it's your product and you're not worried about your customers stealing this idea, um, you know, that feedback's already crucial. Um, 
marketing interviews, and this is something that Gary Vaynerchuk does amazingly well, but why not turn your meetings, your private meetings, in, into a public marketing statement where you are meeting with your partner and like for example Kathleen like if you're meeting with the senator Andy D Deniman or mm -hmm. something maybe you'd have a person a private meeting with him and then say hey by the way can we do a live meeting as well because we want to tell people about all these great things that have come out of the mm -hmm. meeting and we're hopefully going to give you some tips and everyone some tips on how to be as you know effective with these live meetings as possible um, new feature updates for customers and then have you ever heard of an AMA Ask Me Anything? Yes. I only know that That's a from great Reddit. Reading right then. <laughs> Same. So Ask Me Anything is a, is, a, is a classic one. If you have a thought leader in your in your company or a CEO or somebody who you can just go say, like hey, that. guys, you got questions? Ask me anything. I like that. And you just go live and people love it and they ask questions. Um, here's some live meeting style layouts. So we talked about the first one, which is the casual mobile live. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to forget about that one because it's so easy to do. And it's so authentic and it's so personal. Yeah, and it's often not in the office. Like it was in a coffee shop. And sometimes it's fun for your viewers to see you out of the studio, out of the office. Yeah, don't want to forget about that one. The other one is a web conference meeting. So this one is more uh, the, the one in the center at the bottom where the participants are looking directly at the camera and maybe even bringing in other people from around the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Huddle Cam HD products are great for that, speakerphone with echo cancellation, where you can talk to everyone and hear them from around the world and then still live stream it to the world. Um, in room meetings, that's kind of what we're going to show today. Really, we're actually showing kind of like a hybrid style because we started in a broadcast style mm -hmm. and now we're going to merge into a meeting style so there's there's so many ways to do it but we're but we're going to show you a couple different layouts today so here's some industry specific examples for a sports team uh if the coach and the team and the fans can get together after a big win and celebrate you know um i don't see why that wouldn't be a great example the common interest and a positive celebration. Yeah, a positive celebration. Houses of worship can really benefit from this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, with, in the same way that the government can do a city council meeting, houses of worship can do council meetings with the intent to include the larger audience. In a similar way from nonprofits, houses mm -hmm. of worship have a difficult time reaching their local community because of people that maybe ha uh, you know, couldn't make it on Sunday because their kids had a basketball game. Or mm -hmm. you know, people are becoming so remote nowadays. Well, that, if you're um, or an organization that requires funding too, it's a good way to be able to reach out mm -hmm. and um, show a little bit of, not why you, you know, deserve it, but just involve those people making yeah. those donations to be a part of you know, the decisions that are made and an update on where their, those funds are going and whatnot. YouTube currently uh, includes a way to accept donations online. So you can mm -hmm. actually accept donations through YouTube today if your nonprofit is registered with Google. On Facebook, I believe they're, they're definitely moving towards that. I don't think it's there yet, but That's it probably is on the way. Um, on education, I had some ideas on like special groups and special meeting members. Oh my members. gosh, if the community and parents could be involved in like the school board's meetings. Yes. Mm -hmm. That oh would be my. interesting. And live votes <laughs> and whatnot. Live voting. There's that kind of stuff. Yeah. Really that could live be, uh, polling. Pretty pretty heated and we're going to talk about preparedness yeah preparing for that kind of stuff soon and we're going to do that in a live meeting style in just a moment Healthcare, you could talk about health tips program meetings you know some of the stuff that Blue you do season. kind yes. of fits into that kathleen mm -hmm. trying to preventative health all mm -hmm. those types oh, of that, stuff that educational aspect As absolutely and then of course any small business or entrepreneur can you know grow a community and gather customer input um, there's so much you can do with this so now we're going to, let's jump into our meeting, Michael. So now we want to talk about, and Tessa's going to help us with this. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to do this in a live meeting style. And we've got a little a shot of the blackboard. I think we're actually going to use the blackboard as if we're in a, a live meeting. All right. You guys are part of this meeting. Uh, everyone out there watching on YouTube and Facebook. Don't forget to like because we're donating today. Um, but we're going to give you guys five things, actually seven things to consider before live streaming a meeting. You added two? I added two more. Look at you go. So um, first of all, we want to dedicate a team member to monitoring the chat. Tess is monitoring Facebook and YouTube right now. Yes, monitor the chat and maybe take some notes on the meeting. Uh, and we're going to do that today. 
So let's go ahead and add number one to our Blackboard as th these are things that you really need to think about before you go live with your live stream meetings. We want you guys to be successful. So number one is to dedicate a team member. Chat management, perfect. Number two we have here is determine a layout that works for you. And there's a couple different layouts. Um, for example, um, there's the you know, press conference layout, there is the presentation layout, there's the video conference layout, so thinking of layouts. Number three is be prepared to deal with trolls. Essentially. <laughs> There's always going to be trolls and negative commenters, and yeah. I wanted to point out that negative commenters with valid points are very important to respond to um, in the best way that you can possible live, but the trolls can be ignored. People that just say, you suck, mm -hmm. I mean, there's really no nothing important that they've said. If somebody says, you know, I've tried calling support 20 times and nobody's answered, that's something that you should address live. So that other viewers don't see that and then say, wow, that they're not even, they're just pretending that doesn't exist. It exists. You got to address it live. The, the goal is to get them out of your chat and to hopefully in a private message. Mm -hmm. So Tessa's done a lot of that, dealing with trolls. And I actually want to jump over. I've got a whiteboard over here. And Troy T.O.B. Has, has given us a great, so we've got two whiteboards going on, guys, because, of course, one whiteboard is not enough. The truth here is that Paul is whiteboard <laughs> happy, okay? Yes. We have I'm about little, 13 whiteboards in this I'm, building. I'm, I'm a little crazy with the whiteboards, but Troy T.O.B. So we're, we're calling out the great live viewers. We want to give you guys credit for Kathleen, what you're you guys are working on. Right. Um, so Troy says he would like to use live meetings for remote commentators. Great option um, for sports. So I'm just keeping, I'm just keeping, I just want you guys to know, these are the types of crowdsourcing, brainstorming ideas. We can't forget about the great ideas that you guys are giving us. So I'm writing these down. All right, let's keep going, Tess. So, as we get good ideas from our audience, we are going to show them. And thank you so much, Troy, for that good one, because that is a great one. Troy, saying hi to you, Tess. Oh, this goes, I already kind of answered number four, be ready to respond, ready to, respond on to issues. issues. Kind Although, of think about common concerns yes. that pop up and mentally prepare a response for that. And if, be honest, if you don't know the answer, mm -hmm. I get that all the time on Facebook messages. Tess, did your micro did Tess's microphone drop out? I don't know. Is it on? I'm, I'm green. It was just But you can hear it though? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Was it the writing on the chalkboard maybe? It could have been maybe. All right, so we're going to keep going here. Um, the whiteboard, number four, is ready to respond. Now, number five is being careful what you share. These are kind of the negative sides to, to streaming meetings or just the things to consider. Yeah. Okay. But the, these are also, these are basically the things to consider. So the, the things that you just don't want to forget about before you go live is, you know, careful what you share. If, if it's a sensitive meeting with sensitive information, just don't stream it, right? Or you have to tell everyone in the meeting to be very careful. Now, Which usually that goes to me. Tess, don't say anything. <laughs> You're not supposed to. Facebook what else? Facebook is showing some issues right now. Um, really? Yes. Some streaming issues? Yes. All right, we're having a little bit of streaming issues on Facebook. Please let us know um, what's going on there. Number six, don't, get the, don't let your emotions get to the best of you. So, especially when you're in a live meeting. Especially when you're in a live meeting. And then finally, make sure to address relative issues. So, so Tess, what are you going to put there? Control emotions. So, and the reason why that's a good one to put up there just in general is just because, you know, emo you know is address with two D's? Address with two D's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got it. Address issues. So you've got a live audience that you, you need to address their thoughts and concerns. Address issues from previous meetings and, and, and like how you have addressed those issues moving forward. Wow. Um, I want to put this one up by Chad. So Chad, thank you for that great comment. I'm going to put you up on the board here. So Chad Lafarge always has great stuff for us. Chad, of course, 
You guys are part of the live meeting. Chad's saying he streams panel presentations and we have a remote person monitor feedback and comments. So, so this is streaming panel conversations. And it's just like you can't bring everyone in the world to be in the single room. Mm -hmm. We've got over 100 people helping us with this meeting right now. So the power of that, if you, if, you, if you can't fathom the power of that, I might not be able to help you because that is an incredibly powerful thing. Now, Tess, we're going to go on to 10 tips for a successful meeting. Um, these came from you, Tess, but one of the best ones on here, number one, is prepare an agenda. So that you know what the course of your meeting is going to be. I'll sit back down now. Right. Sure. Um, you know, stay on topic. And All whatnot. of this is available on ptzoptics.com slash live meeting. So if you want to download this whole guide, it's yours. Next is use visuals. So whiteboards, blackboards, you name it. They're great to use for this type With live of... streaming, you have the ability to do overlays, sound effects, emoji integration, B-roll, Facebook clips. responses. There's so much you can do to make it fun and spice it up. PTZ cameras. Oh, I can't believe this. Uh, Daryl Spangler from MDV, MVD Mobile Video Devices, the exclusive distributor from Magewell, will donate $500 to the crime victim oh side. My oh God. my God, thank, thank you. you. Oh my gosh, thank This you. is incredible. So I, I, uh, I read that. Thank you so much, Thank Darryl. you, thank that you. So nice. Look at that. Wow. I hope he didn't want to be anonymous. He's, because he's from Chester County. Oh, awesome. Well, he's from Redding. Which okay. I think, is that in Chester County? Or it is, is not, that's, but I appreciate that. County, but they still appreciate wow. it so thank much. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. So that means we're getting close. We're going to get over $2,000 today. That's incredible. Wow. Thank you so much, Daryl. <laughs> so let's just take one quick break here for a second. So what would we be able to do with that amount of money? <sighs> CBC rarely sees that amount of money. Really? Um, Being in Westchester? Yeah, because we are, in fact, um, one of the wealthiest counties in Pennsylvania, right? But we do have that trope that a lot of nonprofits have, and it's difficult to get our story told. Um, a lot of people don't know that we do what we do. Um, but specific to the volunteer program, um, it can go to our training, uh, which is 40 hours. It's, it's a big commitment. It's comprehensive, and it can help make the training a little bit more fun, a little bit better. Um, and we can also have it go to, I mean, directly to direct services and counseling, counseling and counseling. anything that's needed around the office as well. But that's some good stuff for us. Okay, that's good. awesome. I, yeah, I don't mean to put you on the spot because obviously there's plenty of things that you guys can do with that. Uh, but that, I just was checking my phone, and Daryl is such a nice... You, you've met Daryl and Mary mm -hmm. from Mobile Video Devices. They are a distributor for PTC Optics and also uh, Magewell, the capture device. And clearly good people. And yeah. very good people. That's awesome. So thank you so much. All um, right. Wow. Let's, that's awesome. Let's try and uh, go through these pretty All right, quickly. We're going to go through these quick as the possible. Giveaway. They're available. We want to do our giveaway. Um, have a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. Be timely on a schedule. Mm -hmm. Um Especially if you're going live with your meeting. Well, this, isn't. Yeah, this is just for successful meetings. This is for successful so you, meetings. Yeah. People aren't ticked and, and peeved yeah, when be you on show time. up as, as the Don't leader. be late to your live meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and clearly that's not a good look to your boss if you're late to it. <laughs> yeah, if he's watching live from his iPad in Bermuda, don't be late. Keep notes and records. So we're recording our notes. One of the great things about... Um, YouTube and Facebook is that, well, actually, YouTube, your comments go away. Facebook, the comments stay. Mm -hmm. So if you were getting a ton of comments in a productive meeting where maybe people were giving you information about what they would, you know, sometimes the information that you're getting from your live viewers is subliminally important. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is that people might not know that they're giving you like the best information that you could ever get. Like people are saying, you know, I could do it for this or I could do it for that. At this point, all of our ideas for our next shows comes from the live chat. Mm -hmm. And for you, if you see what people are responding to, mm -hmm. what makes them want to donate? They might not literally be telling you, 
but you can see what they're responding to and look at those comments and chats and it might actually be able to help you craft a much more you know effective campaign for your next marketing yeah that strategy so a lot of times it's it's taking like the psychology of it and saying all right what are people responding to from when we said this or when we said that where do we get the most engagement and then tailoring your next uh you know plan you're getting all that you're getting this live it's just it's unprecedented the amount of stuff that you can get Set dates for completed assignments, delegate leadership, move forward and don't linger on a single topic. We skipped this one, encourage open discussion and team participation. As a a leader and a boss, it's really important. Mm -hmm. And then ban unnecessary tech not being used for the meeting. Oh, okay, good. I mean, you know. Ban the tech. This is a perfect example. Every once in a while, Paul's futuristic watch phone goes off in the middle of the show. <laughs> yeah, but that was a good thing. <laughs> I liked that. that. <laughs> See? And this and is just, just for up. meetings. Live meetings, of course, this technology <laughs> use, but any unnecessary technology and distractions. All right? Okay, so now, so that's tips for a successful meeting. Quickly, we're going to do tips for a successful live show, and then we're going to combine the two and leave you with tips for a successful live meeting because it's a little different. So dedicating, this is for a live show, Mm -hmm. dedicate a team member to monitor the chat. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. And moderating the collaboration between the in-room and the online community. So so we've been doing that. It's the next page. No. Yeah, number one. Um, do you not have that? You oh. skipped the tips for successful live show. All right, sorry. Or do you Let's want to, to just blow through them really quick? Oh, my God. I am back. I, you're right. No, we're, we should be on tips for the live show. I'm sorry. Audio is 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 of, of super quality. These might seem important. for, like, dummies, but if you're a business who doesn't typically live stream meetings or a nonprofit or any organization. Yeah, it's helpful for me. Some things just to consider. Audio, you must be heard. Video. Quality. Yeah. All participants must but be I have seen. To turn Kathleen and down the better the quality, the the uh, higher elevated your credibility goes. Someone said that decide Kathleen was a who high. your audience is. Who are you aiming to reach, and why? Mm-hmm. And with that, decide which platform would best be able to reach them. Whether it's Facebook, YouTube, your own private right. website, live the uh, Periscope, Instagram. Depending on the demographics go there to where they are consistency this is huge for us this is really one of the main ways that we grow our live show set time and place so people know when to find you yes so does that get out through everything uh we've also got um, a pre-show we do a pre-show to kind of tease the audience a little bit with what's going to be coming up live um to gather get gain t- that time that it takes to get all the emails out and the notifications out really important uh, have an agenda for the show very similar to having an agenda for your meeting it's why these two you know come together so well audience engagement and community building obviously so important i'm getting phone calls i wonder if more people are trying to donate but i'm sure they will well, regardless um, i won't yell at them then i should let them <laughs> leave a voicemail uh Adequate Ask lighting questions. is very important, and then asking your know, audience questions so important. Asking for the feedback. And one of the things you do so well, Tess, is the emails before the live show, letting people know who won the won the giveaway last week. You know what, Find, what's going trying on Trying to there. creative ways to ask for emails. Hopefully, people like your show; they want to be notified. So now we're going to try to combine our ten tips for a successful meeting with ten tips for a successful live show. Combine them together. One of the first ones Tess thought of was having an adequate space that's inviting and well lit. Your meeting room might not be as well lit as a live streaming room would normally be. Right. Some of these might sound redundant, but you know, this is just our ideas of if you were to have the perfect live meeting, what would you know be necessary? And as you can see here, you know, we've basically just brought a table into our live streaming Mixed studio. <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty big mix and match here, but it, it's working for us. Um, have your camera and audio as, as good a quality as you possibly can. The better you look, it, one of the things I've been thinking about lately is that like television quality style streams are basically becoming available for free on YouTube and Facebook. Mm-hmm. So the more and more people are expecting to kind of replace television, you know, the cord cutters with Facebook and YouTube, the higher their expectations are going to be. So if you're just getting into it, it's like, 
I wish that you, you know, you know, it'd be easier to just get great quality right away. So you do need to kind of think about quality. But I can see Troy's asking, how much money would a basic quality portable live streaming setup cost? You know, your phone is like the first step. Um, if you want to go completely well, how portable, how much is the PTZ producer kit with one camera? The PTZ Optics producer kit is less than five thousand. I think it's like four thousand. Mm -hmm. um, so there's and that's different gonna be levels. A real good quality. I mean, you could start that would be with like incredible a quality. webcam and a speakerphone if you really needed to. But you start where you can, and you grow over time. The sky's the limit. But um, the next thing we have is pick a consistent day and time to stick with if you're starting a show. If you're just doing a live meeting, maybe work it into your live show schedule so you've already got an audience, or at least schedule it and promote it so people know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, you've prepared the agenda for your teams and your audience so everyone's on the same page. One of the things that we do is we have a live uh, partner webinar with all of our partners, and I'm pushing to have the presentation send to people in advance so when they come to the partner webinar they're like prepped ready to go mm -hmm. and this is our time to have that live engagement in the Q&A you know there's in, in the, today's day and age you're not hide, there's no reason to hide information from your audience you want to give them the information and then the live portion of your show is when you guys get to engage and chat mm -hmm. next one's a good one it's present ask listen and mm. respond yes. social listening is so important for us um, and it's a great way to see what's going on with your community and learn and figure out the next steps for your company. Yes, there's so much there, so much information. Don't don't forget about that. And make sure that no sensitive information is offered. You know, we talked a little bit about that. We get a lot of questions that we can't answer sometimes. You know, it's this awkward situation where they know about a new product or they're asking this or that and we aren't sure if the engineer, like we might know something that the engineers don't want us to say. We're always in that situation. So, you know, people might ask, um, you know, I don't know, Kathleen, with what you're doing is very transparent. You know, I, I couldn't imagine a question that someone would say, you know. I mean, a lot of what we do is <laughs> confidential. confidential, but confidential. there are plenty of times I where yeah. I get questions where I don't know the answer. And it's, mm -hmm. it's always okay in my perspective to just be like, let me find that out for you right mm -hmm. for you yeah. guys it's about like availability exactly and being able to offer any questions about services or if somebody's seeking help or attention yeah. mm -hmm. you just like the message is we're here yes yeah very important okay so we talked about visuals somebody monitoring the chat and then the last one is no no respond politely and professionally but do respond and the last one is follow up each meeting with what you achieved and what did you do with the audience input? How is some of that information being used? So that they know that their commentary is valuable and um, being considered. So really the final tips that we have is uh, uh, make it fun. You know, so if you can at all, this is your chance to inject new energy into whatever product that you're most excited about. And Jim is jumping in and saying that always like the idea of providing links to be able to download slides, white papers that further support the show. So yeah, we've done that here. We've got a free download at ptzoptics.com slash live meetings. And Tess is going to put the, the, um, the link in Facebook and YouTube for everybody. Um, make it fun. Use multiple cameras if possible. And then I've got this camera right beside me. I wanted to show a kind of over the shoulder shot. One of the things that I think is really important is addressing the audience directly to the camera. And we've always been big fans of like a behind the scenes camera or on the side camera. And we're about to show you an over the shoulder camera. And I think this is a really powerful one depending on your setup and your style to kind of let people into the meeting. So, you know, the ability to have a camera that can go to the whiteboard, the blackboard, or an over-the-shoulder where it's like, now they're, they really have a seat at the table, for example, um, is one that we really, we really think is good. And then finally, integrate social media. If you can, if you're, if you're streaming to YouTube and Facebook, integrate with YouTube and Facebook. We use vMix Social. There's, a, there's other ways to do it as well, but displaying the comments live from Facebook and YouTube really gets the audience to feel engaged. You know, I wish that, you know, thank you so much, Daryl, from MVD for doing $500. I wish that he would have been able to, um, to be able to put it on the, uh, the quote itself. Um, but regardless, um, 
this is great. And um, what should we do next? What should we do next? <laughs> the giveaway. The live the giveaway. giveaway. Let's do the live giveaway. So let's roll the credits. We're going to do the giveaway. Hang out, everybody. That's been our episode of live meetings. I think it was it was 45 minutes, which is way longer than we normally go. Yeah. But we had a Thank special guest. Thank you so much for fun. joining us. Today. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be your first in-studio guest. I think you really inspired everyone in the chat, so yeah. I really appreciate it. I'm really glad. And thank you for giving me the space to speak. And thank you for yeah. giving back to your community. And also, it seems like you really take care of your audience and you hear your people. And I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question for you. If I want to learn more about your organization, where, yeah. can, where can people learn That more? is an amazing question. Thank you for asking. Um, our website is cvcofcc.org, which is quite a mouthful. But we also have a Facebook. You can just search CVC. And I think we might be somehow linked up with Stream Geeks on Facebook right now. I don't really know how that works. Yeah. But um, CVC, that's pretty much what it's known as. Awesome. We're going to put that in the chat. We'll give everyone a chance to to donate on their own. Of course, we're going to donate $1,500 plus. It looks like at least another hundred and something. Thank you so much. the likes. So thank you so much for everyone who liked out there. You guys really... We like you. We like you <laughs> too. And um, that's about it. It's your last chance to like this video. If you're watching on YouTube, I see 40 of you. Hit that like button. This is the last chance. We got a great donation for everybody. We're going to roll the credits. We're going to do a giveaway. And then that's the show. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks. My palms are sweaty. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did people hear that? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fine. Paul said much worse. <laughs>